And I specifically chose this data set uh, because it does have unequal sample sizes and because in a lot of cases in practice we have unequal sample sizes. And that has a consequence on factorial ANOVAs. Not so much in a one-way analysis of variance, but very much so in the factorial ANOVA. So the options, in addition to putting the uh, estimated marginal means, I'm also going to click on compare main effects. So if I get a statistically significant job category ANOVA, I'll want to then follow that up with, well, compare custodians versus clerks, clerks versus manager, and manager versus custodian. I want to compare all those three um, pairwise comparisons, and I'm going to choose the least significant difference option because as opposed to Bonferroni and Sadak, because there's research showing that if you get a statistically significant main effect for a factor, and that factor has four or less levels, then you should feel comfortable doing a series of um, least significant different uh, comparisons uh, and not worry about increasing your type 1 error rate. So I'm going to be conducting all these analyses with an alpha equal 0 0.05, and if I get a significant ANOVA for a job category, I'm just going to follow that up with uh, basically t-tests, t which use a pooled error term, a pooled standard deviation uh, error term. And that's what the uh, Fisher's LSD is. Uh, with gender, there's only two levels, so um, male-female. So the, uh, the main effect for ANOVA is going to be the same thing as the Fisher's least significant difference uh, test. Uh, but one problem with this um, option that I've put gender and job, cat, cha job category in, so it's going to give me the means for that, but it's not going to follow it up with any uh, post hoc tests. Uh, I don't know why SPSS doesn't allow you to do that in the graphical user interface. You've actually got to add it through the syntax, and I'll show you how to do that once we do the analysis, uh, go through the output. I'll do the extra analysis and show you what the difference is. It's quite easy. It's very easy. You just have to paste the syntax and add this one little term, and then you get very meaningful uh, analyses in SPSS relevant to your interaction. Now I'm also going to ask for some plots because this is really the only way to interpret an interaction, at least in a very meaningful way. And my rule of thumb is to use uh, the level with the least number of, or the factor with the least number of levels and put that into separate lines, and the factor with the most number of levels put that into horizontal axis. axis. And so that's the plot that's going to be generated. And in fact, I find that so useful that that's the first thing I look at when I perform a um, factorial ANOVA is the plot. It'll help. Me, it helps interpret what's going on in your data. So those are the only options I'm going to choose. The last thing I'm going to point out is the model. And because when you have un unequal sample sizes, uh, the ANOVA has to deal with that in one way or another. And arguably, the sums of squares type three. Uh, model or approach that SPSS uses is probably the most defensible and I'll try to remember to give you a reference at the end of this presentation that justifies using the type 3 method and ba very briefly the type 3 method uh, people would say is an unweighted mean approach so it's not going to take into account the fact that some groups have much larger sample sizes and then weight those accordingly. Instead, it's going to quote-unquote pretend that the sample sizes are not unequal and it's simply going to use a basically a harmonic mean. It's going to take the average of the of the mean sample sizes and then apply that to each uh, factor. Uh, and that's the type 3 sums of squares. Now this is a very complicated issue. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail except to say that SPSS's default is type 3, which might be arguably the most defensible approach. And I'll give you, a, a hopefully remember to give you a reference at the end of this presentation about what somebody saying that's probably the best way to go. Uh, I encourage you to research that more if you want. It's um, it's it's relatively interesting area, but I don't think there's an actual solid solution to what should be done. Okay, so those are the options I've chose chosen, and I'm going to click OK and let's look let's look at the output. Just push that out of the way, and we can see that the sample sizes are 
quite drastically unequal. Males and females are somewhat comparable, but then once you get to the um, role levels, they're, they're quite different. Clerical, 363. Custodial, 27.